submitted for CSGO. And... Oh yeah, mic problem. Okay. Hey, this is Vu, and today I'm going to be doing another demo review, this time for Orica Trident. He's actually playing on the Oceanic server, and there's two things I want to mention before the demo. First of all, I may have some static in my mic again. I had it in the previous demo review. I'm very sorry for that. I can't really do anything about it right now. I'm trying my best to fix it, but this is where I'm going to find out if it's fixed, because it comes and goes intermittently, you know, between like 30 minutes, and it's really weird. So if it's on this video, I'll know, and I'll try and fix it again for the next video second thing is submit your demos at vucsgo at gmail.com a lot of people in the comments have asked me if i'm okay doing nova or whatever demo reviews and yeah i'm perfectly fine doing those just doing these in chronological order that's all i'm doing um i'm not you know selecting anything or anything like that i'm just doing it in the order they were submitted i might run into problems with the demos expiring if i do i'll send out emails try and uh, get those demos back get some more demos um you guys might you could like actually save your demos like upload them to mediafire if you can if you're just doing steam run game ones um just to save it just so that if it does run out that would be good but hopefully i'll get i've got 13 to get to and hopefully i'll be able to get to them before they expire anyways going into this one orica trident he's got a five seven and a smoke here which actually i do quite like um when i was originally watching this i've watched the first couple rounds i'm restarting this demo review already but I do really, really like the 5.7 and a smoke, given the position Orica Trident here is playing. Generally, I wouldn't recommend buying a 5.7 and smoke, but playing towards upper, I think it's actually a really good idea, because generally what's going to happen is if they do rush upper, you are simply fragging out. You're not going to have the time to actually reload even your USP. You're not going to have that option. So what's going to happen is they're going to five-man rush out hot, five-man rush out squeaky, or do a split of some sort, and all you can do is spray them down with one one clip as they all run out at you and that's why I like having the 5.7 here because you can get some kills even if you don't find headshots you got extra bullets to work with you should be able to find more kills in general than if you have a USP so definitely do like the 5.7 buy so long it's a situational here so hot and squeaky on this map definitely do like it because you can't really like I mentioned in my pistol video I like to Go aggressive, hold an angle, take a couple shots, fall back, hold another angle, couple shots, fall back, couple shots. You can't do that at upper. That's what the USP and P2000 they excel in doing those sort of things, and you can't do that in upper, so the 5.7 is a good option. Other other places I might like that, um, Banana on Inferno to some extent, um, especially because you can buy a Smoker Flash as well. Um, where else definitely be on inferno to some extent or be on season to some extent as well not inferno uh be on season definitely now the one thing i did mention or notice here was that i almost would have preferred a flash however the way orica trident here uses his smoke top notch moi amazing i really like the way he uses the smoke here so he knows they're going out or lower he's gonna Pop the vents, drop lower, absolutely perfect, because as a squeaky player, you got to be that first rotator down to lower if they are going out or lower, so that's perfect timing. This, I love. If this was the original intent of the smoke, 10 out of 10, A+. Plus. This is good. Smoking off that to delay the lower take and to get in better positions to try and hold it, because generally what's going to happen is exactly what's happened here. Squishy Blob, a little bit of a late call, I'm guessing. But that means that Jake has made it all the way up into lower here before Orca Trident can even rotate over. And that can mean, really, it can spell disaster if you don't have this smoke. So this smoke really means a lot. And so he's going to smoke that off. What I don't like here is that he doesn't go to stairs. You're going to see he's going to stay right here. That's a conscious decision to stay in this spot. Now, the thing you have to recognize is look around the map. This guy, I believe is, is in, he's in Squeaky. Yeah, so that guy's in Squeaky. You got a guy in... Heaven, garage, or lower, sorry, garage, and ramp. So, Orica Trident here, he's the only player holding towards lower. He doesn't need to worry about rotating, anything like that. Only need to worry about holding the lower push. So, you get into a spot where you, you, you're you dedicated to lower here on these stairs. And if they do go back towards upper, shit happens. It You know, you can't stop that. But you gotta hope your team can hold on to that. You have to rely on your team in some regard, right? If you're 1v5 here holding on a lower, you need to commit to holding lower. Don't even worry about rotating. Now, one thing I don't like is 
holding close up to smokes can really be disastrous in a lot of situations because what's going to happen is this first guy is going to run out through the smoke and generally you will be able to kill the first player that runs out through a smoke because of course he's going to be at a disadvantage although because he ran out parallel like this this is what I was talking about in my uh, holding positions making better aim video where he's running out parallel and now Orica Trident has to actually hit a flick shot to hit this guy especially because he was holding so close to the smoke there are a lot of angles he's trying to cover he has to hit a nice flick shot which actually to some extent mitigates the fact that he has an advantage that they're running through the smoke because they're going to have to react to him but he also has to react to them however what will generally happen is they're going to jump out of that smoke or run through it. If they jump through it, that's optimal. You generally want to jump through a smoke just so they can't instantly headshot you. Running through it, is a, it causes a few problems. But if you they jump through the smoke, what's going to happen is generally two people around the same time are going to jump through the smoke. The first guy, easy kill generally. It's going to be a fairly easy kill. The second guy though, what's going to happen is unless you instantly kill the first guy the second guy is going to be the guy that gets you because you're going to take a couple shots at this first guy the second guy is going to walk through that smoke and you're not going to have killed the first guy yet so you're not even going to have an advantage on the second guy and he's just going to be right up next to you put his barrel gun barrel in your face and kill you so generally, you want to get a little bit of a, a distance from that smoke when possible, just so you actually can have a chance to fall back if after you kill that first guy, or you can reset, or anything like that. Anyways, going into this one, the team is going for a force buy. Actually, it's a, a half force buy, which is a little bit weird, but that's fine. What I don't like here is, the thing is, going through mini like this is perfectly fine on pistol rounds, and the reason for that is because this player, you can see Ruinate here, he's looking towards mini from hut. And you can see that here. What you have to worry about is when they have guns, that's going to be an easy kill for them. When they have glocks, pretty tough kill. Most people aren't even going to try and peek that angle, so you can come through mini. But when they do have guns, especially an opper, is going to be peeking through there, and that should be a free kill for him, especially since he has a MP7 here, and you have, or actually he's got a Mac 10, and you have a. Uh, P250. What you want to be doing here with the P250 is getting close range whenever possible. Um, and to do that, usually I would suggest coming around through these rafters. However, the problem with coming around through the rafters is if they do go for a squeaky rush, you're going to be right here, which is actually a worse, more long-range position than in mini. So it's good in that regard. However, the optimal position I think would be to do is drop down onto the wood thing right here, right below heaven, and then run next to hut, and then run out like that. And so what you're going to see is going to happen is they'll drop down on this wood thing, on this wood thing here, come around this side of the rafters and then get behind this box and you can actually have a fairly good angle on people. Now, after this, what you want to be doing is this is, I talked about this in a different video, is you have to recognize indecision, okay? I actually considered making a video on this um, specifically, but you need to be decisive in the way you play it. So you need to choose your angle and then say, I'm going to play here, I'm going to get here, this is how I'm going to play this angle. But instead, Orica Trident, he goes close to Squeaky, then kind of rethinks it, heads over here, shoots at his teammate, and then falls back over to Squeaky again. Um, you want to choose a close range angle, which actually holding the corner right next to Squeaky is good. Um, I Honestly, I, I think holding this box here, um, not many people would think to do this, but holding this box actually, in my eyes, is actually a fairly good spot. Even though you are baiting your teammate just a little bit, if you hold it out like this, you're going to be in a good spot where that guy's going to come out, he's going to start to try and look up at your teammate, and then you're going to be there to kill him. And you're going to be able to surprise him, you're also at a close range angle, and you can also come around the box and support if they head out of hut as well. So that would be a very good spot. Holding close squeaky, also a reasonably good spot, there's nothing wrong with it. Now here, okay, before dying to that guy, you have to recognize you have 22 health. And the thing he, the thing is, if you hold an angle where you're at a bit of a disadvantage, you are pretty much dead if you only have 22 health, because, unfortunately I can't show it, but if that guy comes around that corner, you're only going to see his body and he's going to see your body. And you're going to need to hit him four or five times, and they're going to need to hit you once. Um, so you generally don't want to hold an angle like that when you have 22 health, especially against an MP7, um, because they're going to be able to spam out a lot more shots in a shorter period of time than you. Your advantage with the P250 or a 5.7 is that you can instantly kill them if you 5.7 headshot them or P250 headshot them. So what? that's your real advantage there. Um, 
so you want to be trying to actually utilize that. Get in positions where you can headshot them, especially in positions where you can headshot them from close range and get a, a one-shot kill. Um, so anyways, this one, you've just got a USP, so I'm not even worried about that one at all. Um, you're basically dead to rights there. Again, though, I don't like going through mini very much. Uh, here, we've got an M4. Uh, let me see this by Orca Trident got an M4, a flash, and full body armor. Not necessary. Um, they're going to have AKs. They're going to one-shot headshot you. There's no reason to buy full body armor here, especially because they did five-man SMG up. That probably means that on the next gun round, if you win this gun round, sorry, they're not going to actually be buying or saving anyway. So you don't even have to worry about having head armor against pistols. You only have to worry about the fact that they're going to have AKs. So if you sacrifice that head armor by a nade or a smoker, another flash, right? actually going to be in a better position and again don't like going through mini very much at all however maybe you're fairly confident landing this shot the thing is they maybe they're at a bit of a disadvantage but if they have an op there they're going to get that kill on you nearly every time and past that actually a lot of people when they rush towards up or they're going to nade out squeaky then they're going to nade into mini then they're going to smoke it flash it you're going to be in a tough spot if you're playing in mini it's just in, in my opinion it's a kind of a weak spot i know some people do like to play towards mini but in general i think the usually what you're going to be running towards the upper bomb site is going to be one on floor and one on rafters. Um, that's the most common setup. What your team is actually running here is two on floor, which is actually suboptimal in general in my eyes. Um, just because when you have one on rafters up around here and one on floor, that means they have so much more area to look at, and it's very hard to clear out both rafters and floor. Um, so you're a little bit more of an advantage in that way, but also because rafters is a great position. You just don't want to have two people in rafters. Um, that's the thing. It's not about having two people not on floor. It's about having two people not on rafters. I believe generally two people on rafters is a little bit disadvantageous because you can't go aggressive in lobby like this dark ace guy is going and you're kind of, mm, you're kind of pigeonholed in playing certain spots when you're playing towards those rafters. So generally two rafters, not optimal. However, Holding along squeaky rafters is very good because you have a good vantage point on the guy. I'm trying to aim towards a uh, hut here. You have a good vantage point on this guy hut window. You're also going to have a good vantage point on people running out squeaky. The only thing you have to worry about there is if they're rushing upper, which is what Molotovs are for. You Molotov hut and you both look at squeaky early or you Molotov squeaky and you both look at hut early and you should be in a good position um, to not really worry too much about that upper rush. And then he can drop down on top of hut and you can play in this corner here or you can play, you know, in this corner here, something like that, and you'll be in a good position to actually support each other. I actually kind of like playing towards here, actually near that middle bar, even though it seems a little bit weird. I feel like it's a pretty good spot because you can support your teammate near hut, and you can watch Squeaky at the same time. So that's just my, you know, opinion here. Okay, so you're in a three on four. What you need to be doing here is getting aggressive. So let's see what you do. You see that guy throw that? Okay, the moment he throws that first flash, you need to be pushing because you know he's getting caught with his pants down immediately. And you can see where that first flash is coming from. It's coming from the left of the doorway, which means you can walk right in, get a free kill. Now, if you're in a 4v4, you might not be as eager to push aggressively to try and find that kill. But in a 3v4, definitely want to do that. And in a 4v4, actually, I think it's still definitely a good um, idea in, in general. It's, I would recommend you do that most of the time anyways. Even though it might you might be a little bit more hesitant, you don't want to get away a free kill still this is signaling he wants to execute out upper and you need to push and clear out an angle especially because you're soloing upper what you need to be doing when you're soloing towards a spot if you can imagine yourself um let's imagine that you are playing upper on nuke <laughs> or you could say you're playing you know there's a variety of different positions you could be playing like B on cash or something like that where they're coming from multiple angles and they're coming with multiple players from those multiple angles so what you want to do push one of these angles like if you you can assume if they're executing out upper here which is what you should be expecting because he's throwing those flashes off the wall probably coming in through mini probably coming in through squeaky and through hut well you're never ever going to be able to hold all three positions unless you go absolutely massive and even the best players even if they're playing against bad players are not going to be able to do that on the regular what you want to be doing going aggressive towards one of these positions so 
this looks like what you are doing. You are looking to go aggressive towards one of these positions, which is thumbs up, good job, do that. Um, push through hut, clear out hut, and then you can come back around and try and get damage done from there. Or you could actually push through hut, come around through behind squeaky, and that would be good as well. But you need to make sure that the moment those flashes get thrown, that means he's got his pants down, you have to push in immediately. And I hope that's what you do. There you go. I like that. However, after the first flash, that was just a second where you missed it. After the first flash, should have done that a little bit earlier. Um, you do turn around here towards the hut upper. Um, this is the question of whether or not this is a good play really relies upon what your team is called in terms of numbers of the terrace. Because if they've only called one or two outer, then I think that pushing into hut and clearing out lobby is more important than falling back into upper. Um, because that means they could have one squeaky and too many, which would be really, really bad. Um, but let's just assume you've gotten good information here and you know all three are outer. So that makes this a good idea. However, personally, I don't like holding this angle here that you're holding from next to hot. Generally, I would suggest you either um, play behind the silos here in the middle of site or immediately push up and get into this corner or somewhere along this wall here um, because holding from this box you're playing at, um, they're going to be three man through mini if they are going towards uh, upper and they're just going to be able to trade kills on you. It's just not a great position. So you want to be definitely repositioning quicker and especially if you get close to that um, vent there, you're going to have a quicker rotate to lower. Um, yeah. And there, dropping an event. I like to make sure I drop an event looking at head level. Just a little bit of a, a quirk. Um, just a little bit of an advantage you'll give yourself. If you just look at head level as you drop an event so you can immediately headshot them instead of looking down. You don't need to be looking down. Just make sure you don't touch the ladder as you drop. Um, so anyways, you don't really know where they are. What you want to be doing here is uh, personally if you think they're going lower, go out the back vents and then go around towards here. Or the other thing that you can do, and this is done a lot in 1v1 clutches, you go up the vent, up the vent ladder and go and sit beside one of the vents. And that means that you're going to have a very quick rotate to lower if that's where they're going. And you're also going to be able to watch towards heaven if that's where they want to go as well. And if they go out vents, you're going to have a good angle on them. Because if you're sitting in vents here and they can come behind you, they can come from either vent and they can come from upper, you're in a very tough position if they actually try and push you. And you're also in a very tough position because it's easy easier to rotate to lower than it is to rotate to upper because as you drop these vents you're in a much safer position than going up the ladder in the upper. Anyways, you're just going to die there so that's no big deal. Um, here, going to be going for a... Your team is going for a force buy, so you should definitely go, and go for a force buy as well because they're not just evening out, evening out the money here. They're actually force buying down to like zero dollars. So you need to be buying with your team here. Anyways, no problem. Pushing towards hot. I like that. And I, one thing I do like, just want to mention this, um, I don't miss these things when I, when I don't mention them. I just think they're, you, oftentimes I'll just think they're not really worth mentioning. But I like that you didn't go to pick up the gun there. Because going to pick up the gun, you're going to be in harm's way. You're putting yourself out in the middle of the open where you could get traded back. Whereas you get that kill, you put yourself in a 5v4, and you are on 13 health, so you are very injured, but you're still alive, which is all that's really important. Um, a, a player on 13 health is isn't 13% of a player. He's more like 50% of a player because, uh, or like he, he's 50% better than having a dead player, right? Because just being alive means quite a bit in terms of um, having someone that can be in certain places to hold positions. Now, I don't like this repeak. However, five on two shouldn't be a big deal. Um, it's still, it's a little bit of a slippery slope there because you are five on two. And if it was gun round against gun round, I would say, sure, go for it. However, because this is gun round against save round and you can see you have no armor, Glockenspiel has no armor. You got a Mag 7, a 5 7, and a Scout. Um, 5 on 2 can quickly turn into a really bad scenario if you give up a couple of free kills, and uh, that's really not what you want to do. So, honestly, I'd just stay towards that silo in the middle of the site just to play safe. But, anyways, four on, or 5 on 2, 5 on 1 now. It's going to be a free round. So I'm going to skip over this one. Yeah, didn't even lose a single member, so that's absolutely perfect there. Uh, and, um,. Playing towards upper, I would recommend 
in my opinion, okay, so the nade buy conundrum, it's a little bit of a weird one, because on, I always want Molotov, so the question is, do you get two flashes and a smoke and a Molotov, or do you get a flash, a nade, smoke, and a Molotov, and um, playing towards upper, it's a little bit of a question mark there, but you definitely do want a Molotov, but I'm just wondering if you would want a Molotov and two flashes, or a Molotov, a flash, and a nade, um, if I was playing hot, definitely want a nade. If I'm playing squeaky, really depends. Um, I might go for either. It doesn't really matter. It just depends how you're feeling, I guess. Um, but definitely you want a Molotov because if they're rushing five man out upper, you kind of need a Molotov. And like I said, um, you want to be going rafters, not mini, in which case a Molotov means a lot more. Um, is I'm just going to be holding towards here. I don't think that's a good angle because what you're doing is you're holding towards them pushing out of hut, but they can also just open up squeaky at any moment and shoot you. So you're actually kind of in the middle of the open from two angles, which is just not good. Generally, I like to play behind this vent here. Um, you can play right next to right next to the box there if you want on top of hut. If you have a teammate playing Excuse me. If you have a teammate playing towards heaven, playing on top of hut is definitely a good position so you can help out hut and you can watch squeaky. Um, uh, but you get so many more options if you're playing rafters. I just think it's a much better position to be playing. And the thing is, if they open up this door now or they blow it out, you're actually at a major disadvantage to anybody holding in the back wall here of squeaky along here because you're taking a long range engagement straight up against an AK. And not only is that bad because it's less than 50 50 in my eyes you will lose that engagement more than you win it when you fight m4 against ak at that range but also you're in the position where um you're on nuke so not only are you taking a less than 50 percent advantage engagement you are also in the situation where you're taking an, an under 50 percent engagement on a map that is like 70 percent or like 70 percent i'd say CT sided so that's more than a bad engagement that's a really really bad engagement because uh, the terrorist is always going to want to take that even if it was a 60 40 engagement because you can assume that the map is more than 60 40 for the CTs that would still be a good engagement for him to take you always want to be taking very advantage engagements when you're playing CT side of nuke and on T side of nuke you always want to be taking engagements where even you might be still at a disadvantage but at least you're at a very minimal disadvantage or it's 50 50 or I mean possibly you can get one where it's more than 50 50 but that's pretty tough on a map like this so they're going to be hanging out towards upper and now the problem you have is you have two people in the same spot you definitely don't want to have this um one of you well i guess you because dark ace does have that op in uh, the middle of the open i don't know why he's here but you should definitely go on top of hut here in my eyes you should definitely be on top of hut um, he's gonna come out and just out shoot you that's kind of one of those situations where you just got to work on your aim a little bit you know things are gonna happen you're gonna miss shots everybody does it so it's just gonna happen it's no big deal. here this <laughs> again that's just a lot about your spray i don't necessarily have a problem with you spraying there um the problem i might actually have is that you kind you kind of over committed there instead of committing that hard you can just peek out at a kind of more narrow angle here spray your gun and then if you feel like you're losing that engagement you can come back unpeak that angle instead you're so wide out here you can get a little bit more spray but not only have you opened yourself up to the hot window but you're also in this situation where um you can't fall back if you're losing an engagement which is just not the situation you really want to be in uh, let's move on here. Anyways, you did die there. Oh well. And heading into this one. Same position. You're in the middle of the open. You don't want this. You want to hold a more narrow angle if possible. Um, for as much of the time as possible. Um, so you're going to get that first kill. Um, again, not the greatest engagement, but you did find the kill. And this is the bit. I don't like that bit at all. Um, peeking around towards outer, you were in a 5 on 4 here um, before you just died, but you were in a 5 on 4, um, which means there's absolutely no reason for you to be peeking that angle. Um, do you have a teammate? Yeah, your teammate is watching that as well. Um, 
there's just really no reason for you to be peeking that angle. You you can just stay in mini and instead of instead of taking that engagement, you come into mini and you like hug this back wall so you're not susceptible. And then you just look at them crossing here. So you have a little bit better of an engagement. And if they start shooting at your teammate, then you peek out to support. You don't peek out in front of him because especially since he has an off there, he's going to have the advantage on that player in the first place. There's no reason to put yourself in the middle of the open because... You have to consider it like this. If an opper misses a shot, he has a downtime in which time you can come out and support him while he has that downtime and get that trade kill. Whereas, if you peek out first, um, maybe I'm explaining this a little bit poorly. If you peek out first and you start to miss, you're going to continue missing and then the opera is going to come to support. Um, but the thing is, when you... The opera has a one-shot one kill gun. This is what's really important. Opera has a one-shot kill gun. So if that guy peeks out on your opera, your opera is very likely to just kill him instantly. And then if your opera doesn't kill him instantly, that opens it up for you to support in that downtime before he can land his next shot. Whereas, if you peek out first, you're not going to kill him instantly most of the time, which means you have that possibility of you start missing your first shot and he kills you instantly um, because it's a rifle versus uh, a rifle. Um... Whereas if then the opper comes to support, but sometimes it's going to be too late. You may as well let your opper, who's got a better chance of winning that engagement. So that's a, a better way to explain it. That's my bad. Um, that opper versus the rifler is probably an 80% engagement where the opera has an 80% advantage. You versus that rifler, you've got maybe 50-50 there. So why take the 50-50 engagement before the 80-20 engagement? Um, you may as well take it afterwards because you just have a better um, chance of actually supporting that opera than the opera has of supporting you. Um, especially because that opera was on the outer rafters there. It's kind of hard to support from the outer rafters. You're really just holding an angle. Now I'm here... You just need to make sure here that you're not holding a static angle, and by static here I mean that you're kind of you're crouching down and then you're uncrouching the in the exact same position. You need to be continuously moving to make your body hard to hit. Um, five on three, five on one. So once you, when you're in that five on three, I would like you falling back there instead of continuing to take that engagement, just because you don't really need to hold control of that specific area. You can just play it more passively so you don't give up a free kill. Five on one, though, you just do whatever you want. It doesn't really matter at that point, unless, I mean, he's going to have to get a few kills before it starts to matter again. Um, there, again, you peeked out a little bit too wide. I kind of fast-forwarded over that, but I did notice that you peeked out a little bit too wide. Don't peek out in that way. What you want to be doing is holding this angle, but primarily I'd prefer if you just drop vents and then went to secret here, because what you can do is actually, if you drop the secret early, you can get into this position, which is a very strong position to stop these rotates. Now, with an M4... This angle here, better angle than before because the smoke is a little bit deeper. You're holding a little bit further back. This is a better angle than uh, with that 5.7, especially because their team, they're not down lower yet. And not only that, but they only have three members. If they had five members and they were starting to get down lower, like they were um, right on that other side of the smoke, then definitely on the stairs would be better because you need to commit to holding on. Whereas they only have three people and they're not in secret yet. Um... It's definitely fine not to be on the stairs, but if you do think the three people are in secret, then being on the stairs definitely would be an improvement um, of positioning because, again, you can see the positioning of your team. Um, they're not exactly all in position to watch lower. So if you die here and they start to go out lower, actually Glockenspiel here is not in the greatest position to hold on. I mean, he is towards lower, but he's not in a position where... He's got an advantage really towards lower, so the option is there if they kill you that they come around through lower and they kill that player and then the round is kind of on in some ways, but luckily they didn't do that. So I think it's going to be 7-4 now, and you've got an AK finally, and this is why I don't like playing towards Mini. He's going to get that kill on you. Again, that's not even like a 50-50 engagement. He's got a massive advantage there, and he only had a, a scout, so he did hit a nice shot there to actually land that kill on you. However, if he had an op, I mean, he doesn't have to hit a nice shot if you have an, he has an op. He just has to hit a normal shot. Um, 
Yeah, and uh, even when you go through mini, I don't like holding the angle. You have been through mini. I prefer to go on top of hut, over to this vent, this vent, um, in front of the box next to hut. I just don't like the angles you're holding. Here, I definitely definitely don't like the way you're playing this okay so the thing is as the first rotator lower um you want to get you want to penetrate deep okay you want to penetrate deep into lower and that means that your your secondary rotators which is going to be dark ace uh feck and uh a squishy blob here you are the you're the first responder here you're you're an emt to lower um and what you want to be doing is getting as advanced a position as possible so that they have to run past you um to actually get pushed up into the lower do you see what i'm saying like you want to force them to push up pass you to get pushed up into lower because that way you can either slow them down or stop them from doing so whereas the every second you spend in vents here they're going to be they can get into window side they can push up they can get towards back halls they can get very good positioning on you and your team when you guys have to rotate in um, not only that, but you're crowding the vents because once Dark Ace rotates down, you're both going to be one person to each vent, um, which is really bad. What you want to be doing is you want to definitely be getting into um, control side, um, hopefully near the windows, just stopping them from getting good positioning. Or, I mean, the second place you could be getting is definitely behind here as well, which again, is going to stop them from getting aggressively positioning. Staying in vents is bad, not only because you're not stopping them from getting positioned aggressively, but also because you are um, not in an advantage position. In those vents, I always feel like I'm at a disadvantage. Maybe it's just a personal thing, but if you only have a rifle, um, I feel like it's not a great position to be playing. So let's see how this one goes. You don't know where they're going, and I don't like going mini when you don't know where they're going because they could certainly be going through lobby, in which case you're going to get shot in the back. Uh, I much prefer to play next to this vent here, or if possible, you can actually get into lobby, clear that out, and then like play in dark spot or something so you can just wait for your teammates to rotate if they're getting towards upper, something like that. Um, but I definitely don't like playing towards mini um, as a position, and now you're just going to die and get punished for it. Uh, because they can go through lobby, of course. So, oh well. Heading on over. Again, I don't like going through mini. You're going to get punished for it, actually, there. It hit down to 20 health, so you're not totally punished for it, but he definitely could have and probably should have won that engagement. AK against M4. The AK is always going to have an advantage, so generally he should win that engagement, but actually he's going to be able to call over to his teammates that you have 20 health, and you should be expecting them to nade you. Um, which means you should be fuck, you should be moving immediately. Um, as soon as you win that engagement, you want to fall back, maybe go heaven, or you just go towards this vent here, somewhere where you're not going to get naded, because they know you're there, they know you have 20 health if he called it. You should be expecting them to either be trying to peek out and kill you, or for them to be nading you as quickly as possible. And here, again, this is such a bad spot. We need to not be playing here. Um, I'm sorry I keep mentioning this, but this is really not a very good spot. And there's the nade of Doom finally showing up in your life. Oh well, last round of the half. Again, I like to buy a Molotov. Again, I don't like to go through mini. Um, yeah. Oh well. So here, I definitely don't like playing behind the silo here because it's got all the disadvantages of playing on top hot but none of the advantages um because if they come out squeaky they're probably going to be peeking you here um especially they can smoke off squeaky and get down vents they can do so many things here um and you still have that long rotate into vents um which means you're not going to be able to help as they go towards lower so i like to play on top of hut because then you have a better vantage point on people coming out of both squeaky and uh, hot because what you've done here is you've kind of tried to mitigate that you're looking towards squeaky um, but the problem is now they can come out of hut and easily destroy you <laughs> you can see the problem here right uh, it's just not a great spot to play towards squeaky from and now you're in mini he's got 40 seconds left you don't know where he is so holding mini is a fine position however um, hmm. 
I would generally prefer to hug this left wall because you are in a three on one and that's like one step away from him being in a winnable position, the opponent. Um, so if you hug this wall, basically you're forcing him to clear out as many angles as possible before he finds you. When you hold an angle like this, like in a three on one, I think you should be holding angles where he's not really going to expect you because not only are you trying to get the kill on him, but also because he's on T side, you want to be waiting out the time as much as possible. Um, so if you hold one of these obscure angles like here, then he has to clear this whole area and then he's finally going to see you. So not only do you have the advantage in that he might be looking the opposite direction, but he's also going to waste a ton of time before he even catches you. Whereas if he finds you and kills you, then he's going to go, Oh, well, this whole site's probably clear. I know this is clear as well. Then, like, he really skips ahead in the clock. He's got, like, daylight savings time going on. And uh, he's, like, got a much better position than if he didn't see you. Um, if you weren't there at all, he would still have to clear it. The only problem is that when you are there and he knows that you're there and he kills you, then you're in a really bad position. Um, here, this should be live now. It's, it's weird getting these restarts on, on ESCA from skipping forward. Anyways, going out squeaky here. Um, if you're not going to be nading out the door, I definitely prefer to go out hot more than squeaky, and I definitely prefer one guy to be going hot. But oh well, here you're going to find the first kill, and you're dropping lower, which is a little bit weird. Um, don't necessarily have a problem with that, but your whole team does look to be going towards... Uh, upper so it's a little bit weird to be going lower but there's not it's not the end of the world um definitely not the end of the world it's fine um one other thing is though this is you can a lot of what you do on t side can be mirrored on that ct side because when you get that bomb plant again you want to be getting you want to be penetrating as deep as possible, um, basically just so that they have to get past you before they can get in good positioning to retake the site. Whereas what you've done here by, you knew as soon as you got down here, or you should have known, they're probably not in control side here. Um, and the longer you wait, the more um, the more likely it is that they are going to be in control side. And if they are in control side, then they're starting to be able to have a good position to retake on the site, um, which means... You definitely want to get control of control side. Uh, pun intended, I guess. Uh, <laughs> you definitely want to be getting control of control side just because, you know, it's such an important area. Uh, and if you do it really quickly, you're definitely going to be able to get control of there. And as soon as you get in there, you're in a good position to hold onto the site. Whereas as you stay in site, this is one of these positions. Site, especially behind here or in one of these corners, that's the position where you plant the bomb and you go there because you're stuck. Because they're already rotating in on you. This spot in site is not optimal positioning um control side toxic even especially with that bomb plant and the fact that you've got teammates look where your teammates are they're both by ram toxic would be literally it might literally be the best possible positioning for you because your ramp guys are going to be shooting at them anyways then you open up toxic and you're like hey what's up i'm just gonna kill you why are you defusing the bomb get away from my wife like it's it's such a good position um for you to play in. Playing in sight here is just not a great position. Um, it's just not. So then they're going to come out. And they should have killed you a little bit quicker. And, but, I mean, as soon as you ended up with two guys towards vents there and you were in sight uh, and the bomb was planted, especially how ticked down it was, um, generally you should be winning that round in any case. Um, there, just a little bit more awareness. It's just something that's going to come with time, of course. Just a little bit more awareness of where... Um, the opponents are on the map. And here, your whole team is going outer. Let me see, eight, six. Yeah, your whole team is going outer. Um, holding lobby alone, bad. Holding, even holding lobby with your full team is a little bit dangerous. When I'm playing with a full team and I'm calling strats, I usually say to stay on top of lobby. And if your whole team is going outer, definitely, definitely, definitely stay on top of lobby. Or at the very worst, stay in the back here. Don't, like here, they could be pushing hot. I mean, at the worst, they should be trading here if they're actually pushing coordinated into lobby, which uh, apparently they're not, but they should be. Um, and they are going to trade on you anyways. Yeah, just playing in lobby alone is just really, really weak in general. You can just play on top of lobby. The reason I like to play on top of lobby even more is because um, if you're playing on top of lobby, you can be watching this, watch this, then look over, and you're holding the whole 
lobby just so simply um, without really taking any risk at all. Um, looks like they might have won that round. I'm not sure. Excuse me. Yeah, they did win that round, and then you end up dying. Um, that death there, from what I could see, was a little bit about you just um, going a little bit too aggressive with the deagle there, but um, don't really have a problem with it. Trying to go for an, a, a pick when you're down a man is definitely a positive um, thing to do. There, don't take an engagement with the P250. That's like that's like uh, when my cat, okay, my cat will like swat at me and he'll be like, fuck you, dog, I'm gonna kill you. And I'm like, dude, really? The fuck is going on in your head right now? Like, you really think you're gonna fucking kill me? Like, I'll, I could fuck you up. I wouldn't even need my arms. I could kill my cat with my two legs. I don't even need my arms for that shit, okay? You taking a fight with the P250 against M4s from Heaven, Hell, and the fucking CT Red is like my cat trying to attack me. It's just doomed to failure from the beginning. So now you're going to be on a buy round. Um, so we'll see how this one goes. Uh, running straight through a smoke, probably not optimal. <laughs> um, of course, you are following your team, so I'm not going to blame that on you. But whoever the fuck called that strat, hit him in the head. Like, that is, don't do that. And if you, the thing is, one of the skills I have when I'm playing in, like, ESCA and matchmake is that I'm not afraid to call out stupid strats. Like, someone in my team will be like, Yo, guys, what we're going to do this round is we're going to five-man apartments. And I'll be like, no, don't do that. Everybody listening, do not do that. That is a bad idea. J don't listen to this guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Go the other direction. Direction, listen to none of what he's saying like this is seriously what I tell people because it's just running five-man ramp after they throw that smoke definitely not a good idea now ramp is a position that I definitely like to go um, in solo queue especially if I go there solo the thing is I don't like that <laughs> even if I tell my team I'm like hey guys look I'm gonna get pick here at ramp just relax, just chill out, woo-saw, smoke some weed, chill in lobby, I mean, like, men in black it up, right, in lobby, and just wait, and I'll try and take ramp. If people are, like, crowding around my personal space, I feel, I feel awkward, like, I need to push something. So generally, I'll just be like, look, hold, pushes, I'm gonna go towards ramp, one guy come with me just to, like, support, and then you can take ramp with two people, actually, in my opinion, better than you can take it with five, because you don't, ramp is one of those places, look at the exit to ramp here, look how small this exit is. Do you need five people for that? No, you need one, maybe two people are the maximum you can fit out of ramp without, like, having a complete clusterfuck. You don't need to have five people running out of there. You just need one or two, really. Um, you definitely don't need five. If you just work that slowly with one or two people, of course, waiting out that smoke that they threw, you're definitely, you're going to be in a better position than if you uh, work with five people. So here, again, you've got the cat problem going on, trying to attack someone in mini with a P250 from outside of hell. Um, again, okay, you did win that engagement, but I have mentioned this before, um, not in this video, of course, but I haven't mentioned, I have mentioned before, sorry, that um, just because something goes well for you doesn't mean it was a good play. Now. If you believe that you dinked that guy before he turned around, then re-peeking, I'll accept it. <laughs> like, I'll accept it. You hand me in this term paper, I'll say, all right, this was accepted. However, if you don't think you dinked him on your first peek before he turned around, then re-peeking is definitely a bad idea. Um, he should be winning that engagement most of the time. So, if you think you dinked him, re-peeking to get the next couple shots off just to finish him off, perfectly fine. If you don't think you dinked him, re-peeking there to kill him, definitely not perfectly fine. Um, so you got that kill, and then he just ran out and killed you. Um, actually, now that I know you had the bomb, I'm um, starting to think that's a less and less of a good play there. 
Um, with the bomb, you what you could have done is dropped the bomb into secret here at some point and then gone back and peeked up just so that they didn't know you had the bomb. Just because the just because the fact that they know you have the bomb there is going to change the way they want to play and it's going to put you at a much worse in a much worse position than if they don't know you have the bomb. Um, if they think the bomb's still down and they don't know where it could be, because then they have to worry about your teammate and you equally. Whereas if they know you have the bomb, they can just be like, oh yeah, fuck that guy in upper, we're just going to cover this guy, right? And like, you kind of have to worry about that just a little bit. Again, you were peeking a little bit too wide here. Um, yeah, you're peeking a little bit too wide. Yeah. Because... trying to word this correctly you you don't want to peek okay. peeking wide is a very big problem and actually it's something where um a lot of people go uh, i think i crouch too much um where i don't think that's i think crouching too much is a symptom of a problem and the problem is that you commit to too many engagements and committing to too many engagements includes another symptom you peek really wide, which is what you're doing. You are out in the middle of the open, like way out in the open. You want to be peeking narrow as the angles you hold when you're shooting at people, you want it to be as narrow as physically possible while you can still see their whole body. Um, the only reason you want to be peeking a wide angle is if you know someone is holding a specific angle and you know where they are and you want to over peek that angle to make them to force them to hit a nice shot to readjust their aim while you only have to peek out right at them. So you over peek their angle because then you'll have an even more of an advantage because if they're holding a tight angle expecting you to shoulder peek, then you over peek. Well, I keep saying over peek. You over peek that angle. They have to adjust their crosshair. You don't. You have a huge advantage. That's the only time you want to be wide peeking. Um, you really don't want to be wide peeking as much as you are. So here three on four you definitely 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 want to be going towards the lower right now um with that smoke towards garage maybe maybe may, like possibly you could go towards mini however i think going towards lower in general is going to be the better position because you don't know okay just imagine this whole side of the map is question mark and so is Okay, what do you know right now? Well, you know, there's one guy in in garage. You know nothing else. <laughs> like nothing else. This whole map is a question mark. Like all of these spots I'm shading in, this is all things you have no idea about. Like y the thing is looking from an outside perspective, going towards mini almost does seem like a good idea, right? But in general, gonna be a bad one what you want to be doing here is forcing down lower because then you can force rotates with you because this guy's gonna be like oh he's going down lower someone cover him which means someone has to cover you one of these guys right you can see three people none of them so long as you are shooting at this guy in in garage here you they don't have to worry about you if he goes only one person outer and he goes, he's not lower, which is probably what he said. They don't have to worry about you at all. So if you get out of view, out of like if they don't see you, they don't know where you are, they have to worry about both sides. They have to worry about you going back outer, and they have to worry about you going lower. So they actually have to submit or commit two people to your exact location. So if you just walk into lower, you can do quite a bit more than actually making noise towards outer because... Um, a player where they don't know where you are, you're so much more dangerous than when they do know where you are. Just because, I mean, it's like the nin- you're, you're, you are- I- It's like, um... What is this? It's like being a being a superhero, and the superhero always loses, right? Because uh, the villain, he can just go fucking murder whoever he wants, and the superhero, he's got to defend like a million positions at the same time, right? Well, that's what they are. Like, if you go into hiding, they have to defend all of these weird positions, and they have to like worry about like a hundred spots, and they have to worry about a lot of stuff that they don't have to worry about if they know exactly where you are. And I have. No idea why I decided to make an analogy about that because it's 
fairly self-explanatory in the first place, but it's very important to recognize that if they don't know where you are, you are at more of an advantage than they are if they know where you are in any case, which is very important when you think about it in terms of clutching. Um, it's not as applicable in a larger number of scenarios quite as often, but when you are clutching, this is super, super, super important. When you are clutching, you always want to get one guy and then go off the radar, okay? You're Jason Bourne up in this bitch. What you want to be doing, you get a kill, you, like, you get a kill, and then you immediately fake the death cam, and then you try and reposition as quickly as possible so they have no idea where you are and you catch the next guy off guard as well, right? Because th this is actually a theme for this whole game that I've been seeing, is you, you give away your position a little bit too much, and you give away too much information, and why are they going to buy the cow if they get the milk for free? I mean... <laughs> I gotta stop with the analogies, man. I can't stop myself. God. Uh, it's, it's just... You don't want to be giving away your position as much as you are. You're giving it away for free, and that's just not what you want to be doing. Um, you need to be walking a little bit more. You need to be going into hiding a little bit more. Um, just things like that. Um, that peak there, again, very wide of a peak. Um... Optimally, you shoulder peek, get the first kill, and then unpeek. Um, of course, that's not always going to happen, and the, the wider peek there isn't necessarily a bad thing, given the way that round played out. But just a, another thing where you could have narrow peeked, and it would have been probably a better idea um, in general. Here, standard, spraying it through lobby. Nothing weird happening here. Waiting for something interesting to happen. Nothing has gone right or wrong so far in this game or in this round. Um, of course, one thing to mention: you you don't have to peek here. You've had three teammates run by. It's this is if someone is in this spot right now. If someone was in that spot when you checked that corner, I have to question their mental capacity. If they sat in that corner and let three people run by, I don't care what gun you have, what you're trying to do, if you let three people run by, unless you are intentionally trolling, you got something wrong with you, okay? Seriously, don't do that if you are ever in that scenario. Um, and you can probably assume your teammate did peek that as well. Um, there. Alright, you're smoking towards site for a bomb plan. I do like that. Yep, yeah, everything's going perfectly well. Um, three on two. I'd prefer you get into toxic here, just because this is not a good position. This is one of those positions where you could easily end up dying without finding a single kill, and then it's a two on two, and all of a sudden they have a good chance of winning the round. So I much prefer you go toxic there, or... Because you do have this Glock and Spiel player to like right above, and not only that, but you have one player ramp, then this is a position where actually playing in sight would actually be a little bit more to your advantage than playing back here. Um, this spot is not the end of the world because you you do have support here for Glock and Spiel, but Glock and Spiel is just such a bad spot. Sometimes you have to kind of cut your ties with a player when they're doing something really, really dumb. Um, you kind of have to be like, yeah, you, you go do that. I'm just going to go do something a little bit more smart than that. Um, not necessarily what Glockenspiel is doing here is dumb. It's just not a great position to be in. Um, it, I mean, it's good in that he's going to surprise people, but it's bad in that it is a bad position. <laughs> like, if they... Like, that's what I'm... Hopefully that made sense to you. It's good in that he's going to surprise people as they come out events, but it's bad in that there are so many angles he can be shot from here. He's got nowhere to fall back to. It's just a bad angle to be holding in general. Um, so it's not that he's picked a bad angle. It's just kind of a, it's it's one of those angles where it's good in some ways and really really bad in others. And I just um, I'd prefer you play towards Toxic, because the thing is, as the bomb ticks down, all you need to be doing is delaying, and what's gonna happen is, okay, let's imagine Glockenspiel here is gone, okay, because he's kind of in one of those one-off positions, like Toxic is, um, imagine it's a two-on-two, -two because that's often gonna happen, this guy, he either gets a kill and the round's won, or he dies, and you're in a two-on-two, -two. so you have to, let's just say... This is perfect. Just imagine this guy is not even there. Is this a good spot? 
I think we both know the answer is no. Um, in general, this is a bad spot if you're in a two-on-two, um, given the position of Feck. Uh, okay, there's no position where Feck could be where this is a good spot in a two-on-two, -two, okay? So let's not lie to ourselves here. If Glockenspiel is dead, this, bad spot. No, don't do that. Um, so where would be a good spot? Well, possibly towards the bottom of site here under Glockenspiel. However, I think the best spot you could play would be Toxic, um, because Feck is going to be delaying them quite a bit just from ramp here. He's going to be able to, you know, come down ramp, delay them a little bit. And all you have to do is wait out the bomb just a little. And with only two people alive, this is why this is a good spot. Because when you open up that toxic door, you are basically guaranteed to get at least one person. Unless they're like nading you out or molotoving you or something. You're basically guaranteed to get one kill. Um, and in a two-on-two, -two, all you need to do is guarantee one kill. Because if you can guarantee one kill, you've done a good job. I mean, you, I mean, obviously you want to get more, but actually you can definitely get more when you play towards that toxic area. So you're guaranteeing yourself a kill and probably more. And given the positioning effect, that basically means he's going to delay, 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 and then you're going to open up that door and be like the backup plan, right? You're going to show up and just make sure that nothing goes wrong. And their effect, or sorry, Glockenfield, he did get that kill, so great for him. But when a player is in a position like that, I think it's I think that's a perfect situation to be like, look, if he dies, where would a good position be? Because there's nowhere you can go in that two on or three on two there that is seriously gonna support him. There are so many angles when he's playing there that he's going to get shot at and killed and you can't do anything about it to get a trade kill in which case you need to just say look he's just going to do his own thing i'm going to try and find a position to play this 2v2 on if he does die um perfect um, opening this door you're going a little bit kind of scary aggressive here um given your position i mean your teammates are going towards ramp and one of your teammates is outer so what is the point of going towards squeaky here um, you have to always have a reasoning behind what you're doing, and I can't really necessarily find the reasoning for what you're doing here um, as being readily available. Can you? Like, I, know, I mean, it, yeah, here, you're going to grab the bomb and go towards the ramp. I quite like this. Um, I don't like that you guys are going upper, uh, or hell. I mean, as a strategy, I don't think that's a great one. But anyways, it's fine. Now, one thing I don't like is... Now, I did say that going through lobby and supporting your teammates was good. But when they died, I think going back through lobby and going towards upper was also good. Um, not going towards lower. Because when if they know you have control of ramp, where are the two spots they're definitely going to be watching? Well, spot number one... Fucking lower. Spot number two, probably hell, especially since they just killed your two teammates at hell. So your two options in my eyes, the two most obvious options, follow those teams into teammates into hell and try and get the trade because the only reason this is a good idea in my eyes is because the teammates are going to be able to call where that guy is. So you're going to have a knowledge on where he is. You're going to be able to peek out, maybe get that kill. Um... It's generally not good, though. Uh, in, my, in my eyes, it's better to go towards lobby uh, because then you're going to run into one person, you get that kill, then maybe you turn around and go lower and you're in a better position. Um, but, I mean, you should never be in a... You, I'm, getting that first kill was something that never should have happened. I mean, Zookeeper here has missed how many shots? Like, five? I mean, like, he shouldn't have let you... This, every second that this goes on is a second that should not have ever happened in any way, shape, or form. Like, <laughs> you shouldn't have gotten two kills there. You shouldn't have nearly gotten a bomb plant. That None of that should have happened in, an op in, a, in a world where everybody plays optimally. That doesn't happen. Um, anyways... Now you're on a P250, coming around. I like I like the way Feck played it. You're kind of just copying Feck here, but running around close to Mini is a good idea because then you come around and peek towards Mini and you can see he was in a very close angle there, and that's the type of thing you want to be doing, forcing close-range engagements. And uh, that's perfect. Now coming into upper. Uh, yeah, no problem with the way you're playing this. Sorry, just said blow my nose there. Oh, 
now peeking around. You're in a three on three here, so Glock and Spiel, he's he he likes to play positions like this where it's like he is he is all alone. He is on an island right now. There's nothing you can do to help this guy if he wants to get a kill. He either gets his kill by out shooting the guy or he's dead. Um He's not really allowing for much team play, so you need to basically say, look, I can't help you. I got to abandon you. I'm going to have to find a better spot to play. And right next to Hut here, probably not the best spot. I'd prefer if you went into Lobby um, to try and hold from inside of Hut. Just because it's a more dynamic position here, you're basically here, you're kind of stuck. You have to frag out. That's all you can really do. Um, you, you can't really do anything but that. And the moment that guy dies... Why why go around the front of this box? I mean, you know one's hot and you know one you know one's heaven, you know one's hot. So what's the point of going around the front of that box? Doesn't make much sense, does it? Um if you drop behind that box, then you can play the bomb. I mean the bomb's planted for mini. There's no reason to be on front of, in front of this box. Um that just meant that you just died there for no reason. Um definitely not played correctly. Here with an AK, gun round. You like to do a lot of spamming through um, through walls, and that's one of the things that um, a lot of people have problems with in this map. Because on every single map, I have one spot that I like to go to more than others, where I'm comfortable going and trying to get an entry frag nearly every round. Um, you don't have one of those spots here. I would suggest you go towards ramp. I have a video on this, you can watch it, N why, why Nuke is so T-sided, and how to take ramp, or something like that, where I talk about, I really like to take ramp, I think it's the best spot to go on T-side on this map, but maybe you don't like going towards ramp, but you need to find a spot where you're comfortable always getting an entry on T-side, or at least more often than not, and go there as much as possible. Um, and go there every round if you feel comfortable um but what you're doing here is you're just basically you're just spamming through some walls hoping that a kill happens to fly by into your life like it's just not gonna happen um kills on nuke don't just happen whereas kills on other maps do kind of just happen sometimes right so you, you can get away with kind of just going around and looking for kills on some maps like dust 2 specifically but you know basically every other map you can get away with that on nuke you are punished for it if you don't have a clear idea of what you want to be doing in any given round you are punished for it you will not find kills you will not so you need to try and do that as much as possible find a spot where you're comfortable going every round maybe that's twinkie maybe you like to open or nade out squeaky and play in there a lot of players and in invite do that i think i've seen shroud do that a couple times there's someone on or actually maybe it's nothing that does it on cloud nine where every round they nade out squeaky and they just be like yeah if you want to peek into squeaky i'm totally fine with taking this engagement because it's a 50 50 engagement and nuke is not a 50 50 map so go for it fucking bring it on i've seen a lot of people do that perfectly fine because that's a strategy in itself so is going outer so is going ramp not <laughs> sitting in hut and spamming through walls is not um i mean i guess maybe you're delaying for your team to do things but in solo queue you never want to focus on allowing your team to make the work because then you're you're leaving your fate up to the hands of a bunch of people that are probably not very good at all <laughs> um really you're basically by staying in in lobby all this time you've done this all half you're basically leaving the fate of every single round up to your teammates which basically means that you are the fate of these the matchmaking gods which teammates you get placed with either you get placed with teammates that are better than the opposition or worse than the opposition but you have no actual say on how or impact on the rounds given so if you got put into a nova game okay so this is a dmg demo if you as a DMG got put into a Nova game, how would you carry if you just spammed through walls every round? Well, I mean, certainly you would get more kills, certainly you would help out more in general, and maybe you'd find some more kills later in the round, but if you get stuck with a shitty Nova team that is worse on average, 
fairly quite a bit worse. Like, if you're just on a Nova account and every game is supposed to be 50-50, you know, you know those games happen where you get stuck with a shitty team against a good team. And if you're playing with four Novas and you as a DMG are on that team, how are you going to carry them? Well, certainly not by sitting in lobby and spamming through all the walls. Um... <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, you're just, you, you gotta focus on, like, the winning mentality, really, where you focus on carrying your shitty team, like, you have to assume every team you play with, like, when you go into a game in solo queue, you should assume that every player, you, every team you play with, I mean, each player individually, they're, they're beautiful snowflakes, right, but fuck it, they're bad, they're, like, okay, you don't want to say that, but, Every game I go into personally, I'm going to assume that my team is going to be worse than theirs. Now, maybe not, you know, a lot worse. Maybe not like they're going to get shit on. But I'm going to assume in every game that I go into that my team is, say, 10% worse. Let's just say 10% worse on average. So every player is going to lose the round if I leave it up to them. So I want to go into every game and say, how can I force my team to win as many rounds as possible how can i go into every round and say we're gonna win this round only because i am better and i can carry my shit team and we can win like every round you need to be thinking that rather than whatever you're thinking <laughs> i'm sorry whatever you're thinking like that's that's just the that's the correct mentality to, in my eyes that's the correct mentality because you have to assume that when you play in solo queue your team is not generally going to be better. You can't leave it up to your shitty team to actually carry you to win games. It's just, it's not a winning strategy. Anyway, I already saw the score of the game beforehand, so I know it ends at 16-13. You guys don't win that round. So, anyways, that's going to be the end of this one. I just do one demo review, you know, at a time here, because uh, I, I want to give every demo review, you know, my full attention and not kind of cheap out on some people, whereas I feel like if I did 10 demo reviews in a row, the second plus demo reviews would start to go downhill so i'll just do these one at a time anyways thanks